Take a moment and imagine saying these words, no more new clients. Too far-fetched? It's not. At least, it wasn't for Benjamin, who's a loving husband and a father of six. Back in 2015, he became worried when he realized that most of his clients were about to retire. Living in a small rural town, he totally exhausted his current niche and realized he needed to tap into a younger market. Then Ben stumbled upon an underused yet highly effective strategy, and it changed everything. Since then, he implemented a plan that's not only making him more money, but is forcing him to work less, unless you include the work of fatherhood. So, if you're ready to grow your business to the point where you're saying no to new clients, then this is the video for you. Tonight, we are going to jump into the secret lead source to 200 days off a year, plus a fully booked calendar by a father of six who also in his all, we wouldn't even say spare time because this guy has nothing but time because he's done something incredibly smart in his practice. He loves to throw axes around. He's an ax thrower uh, in his hobby. So how exciting is that guy? So I couldn't be more excited to bring our special guest up tonight. And I am just going to flip over my cam over here and I'm going to bring him up. He's been waiting in the wings. This is my personal friend and industry rock star, Ben. Ben, you want to come on up here and... Uh, We'll welcome you up. There he is. Yes, hey, my I'm man. Here. My man. Good to All see right. you today. Good to see yeah, you, I'm brother. Happy to be here. So yeah, I love um, I love talking to advisors. Any chance I can get. So I'm excited to be here. That's awesome. You you really cut from the same cloth as everybody that's part of Shift Nation here. Uh, you know, the Power Hour is all about sharing what's working in an open, abundant mentality. You know, we don't charge for these. Yet people say, wow, you guys should have charged for that class because it was better than something I paid for. Great, you know, pay it forward, help go and help somebody else out. So Ben, so good to have you, man. There's a lot we got to catch up on. But here's the thing, a lot of our attendees don't know you like I know you. And, you know, people might know you today. Some of you who listen to podcasts might have heard Ben as one of the top, uh, top podcasts in the world in the financial space. Uh, but it wasn't always like that. And, you know, we're, we're going to talk about his rise, uh, his values of family tonight. We're going to talk about how is he doing things like this? Like I got something on my screen I wanted to share everybody. How is he getting $60 million in AUM prospects from just one completely free source? Like look at these numbers. This is absolutely insane. So we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about the journey. And uh, we want to also have you guys feel free to ask questions. Uh, tonight as well. So Ben, you know, let's go back in time. We're all of us, none, I don't think any of us graduated school. We said, I want to be a financial advisor. I live to sell insurance, right? That's not really one of the top three of little boys. <laughs> so how'd you get into this space, man? Well, I, I knew that I wanted to do something in finance since I was just a little kid. I mean, after you graduate kind of the fireman and, and rock star phase, you know, I remember being, this is before the era of standing desks, right? So you, you can imagine how tall I was. But I, I can remember at my grandpa's desk being just tall enough where I could see over the top. And he was showing me, this was back in the early 80s. He would show me these spreadsheets that he would make by hand. And this was back when CDs were paying interest, right? And he would show me these compound interest things that he did by hand. And he would show me, you know, he would show me coins. And he's like, well, this is a diamond. This, this has red edges and this is a nickel. He would teach me about finance since I was old enough to, to talk. So, uh, so I, I've been, now that was back in the days when he would call his broker on the phone, you know, so, and he was not a wealthy guy. He worked for a soul conservation, right? Just like a, a public servant, right? But uh, yeah, he would call his broker on the phone and they would talk about IPOs and, and all sorts of other things. I th and he really liked it. He was a Kiplinger's subscriber for a long time. So when I started getting mentioned in Kiplinger's, it was such a, a big thrill to us. But um, yeah, so I wanted to be an advisor for a really, really long time. Maybe not since I was a little, little kid, but but uh, that was kind of my journey. Uh, I studied economics and finance in, in, in school. I thought I wanted to be like a stockbroker, uh, but then I got a job at, at an insurance agency out of, out of the military and just fell in love with planning. Uh, so much so that I said, that's all I want to focus on. And so I launched my uh, my RIA back on my 33rd birthday in uh, September 2nd, 2014. So that's sort of the Cliff Notes version of uh, of what I've done the last 20 years or so. So, 
you know, tell us about the early days of of this journey for you, uh, Ben, uh, as an advisor, you know, those early years are not easy. Kind of what, what, what was going on with you in, the, in those early days? Yeah. So my early days were a lot like, I think most financial advisors at, at, I worked at a big fortune 500 insurance company and every Monday night would be call night and we would, uh, you know, smile and dial, you know, this was a, a company where they would sort of give you all the orphan clients, you know, that the other advisors that were more tenured didn't want. And we would call them up and we'd offer them free financial planning. And, and you know, there's a, it was a three-step kind of a process that the CFP board laid out. I wasn't a CFP at the time, but uh, you know, you'd call them up, offer them free financial planning. I want to review your insurance products. And then, you know, hopefully that would lead to, to something else. So uh, I probably delivered like, I don't know, a hundred financial plans with no sales. Uh, I, I'm terrible at sales, uh, you know, which is, which is, I guess, what led me eventually to become a digital content creator. But uh, yeah, I just really struggled for years and years until I just sort of built up my chops by learning the hard way uh, about how to provide value to people. Uh, and then eventually they'll trust you with their life savings. Hmm. So I want to, I want to ask, you sent me this before and I absolutely love it. What, what is going on in your mind right here? Like at what stage in your business do we find you here? <laughs> uh, that, that is in the insurance sales sales world. I would have been, my daughter was born in 2007. So that would have been however long ago, but uh, pretty early in my career, actually, actually I passed my series seven and my insurance exams in 2007. So this is about six to eight months into being a financial advisor officially, you know, not, you know, past my internships and things like that, but but uh, yeah, so I now had a mouth to feed. Uh, luckily, my wife had a job uh, as a nurse at the time. She's she's since retired. But uh, yeah, I'm just holding my kid and thinking uh, uh, my life is no longer my own. In a good <laughs> so way. So that's where deer deer meat headlights. Deer meat headlights. Um, you you slipped in something really cool. You're not an older looking guy. You're you're a really young looking guy. Your wife looks really young, as I saw in the other picture. And you just slipped in. Yeah, she's now retired. What, t tell us about that. Like, when did that happen? That That's just that subtle Midwestern fake humbleness, you know, it just got, it comes out sometimes. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, my wife, um, we started the practice. Let's see, actually my wife quit her job before I started my own practice. Uh, so that was extra stress, you know, uh, one income, uh, we had to go kind of scorch earth on our finances and maybe even like cash out an IRA or two to start the business. But uh, she retired when when um, when we had Ben. So he is 10. So she retired about 10 years ago. So that about she would have been like 28. Now retired, she's got six kids. So I mean, she's not exactly, you know, uh, you know, having drinks with umbrellas in them on the beach or anything like that, you know, but yeah, but I mean, like, I think that's every every thoughtful advisor's goal is to help somebody in their family you know, get get to a level of comfort, of care, of support that, you know, would have been something that could only happen years down the road. You know, I know that's been a driver for me in my life. And I know a lot of people that's been their drivers. They want to, you know, a lot of husbands that I talk to, I want to retire my wife. That's like one of the first things, the, gr the good husbands out there, they're like, yeah, I want I, my wife, you know, I don't want her to be working anymore. I want her to be really enjoying. And kudos to you. Um, for having been able to achieve that and for their careful balance of finances. And now your business just shot off, you know, it, it's taking off that you've done that. So I really want to acknowledge you uh, for that. So, you know, you're, a, I think the other thing people should know about you is you're in a really big populated city that has lots of opportunity. You're oh, an yeah. extrovert and you're good at golf. And oh, yeah. you're amazing at networking, right? Like oh, you have oh. all these sick advantages built into your DNA, right? I would, yeah, I was just born lucky. Uh, yeah, so I live in beautiful Bismarck, North Dakota, uh, which is uh, not the state with the faces. People often make that mistake. That's South Dakota. But I live 33 miles from the geographical center of North America, which is the middle of nowhere. Uh, there's six or 700,000 people in my whole state. And our state is doing pretty well. But our our three main employers in Bismarck are the local government, which doesn't pay so hot, uh, coal and oil, which are both doing really, really bad right now. So uh, but my practice is thriving. I took I work, I was in the office 46 percent of 2020 and I grew AUM by over 30 percent at a 65 percent profitability. 
Wow. And, and what percentage of your clients are in North Dakota? Uh, none of my new clients are in North Dakota. We do have some some traditional clients that we met kind of the old fashioned way through through attending, uh, you know, doing doing client referral luncheons and things like that or or attending like energy conferences, like industry conferences. We would go and, and we'd meet people that way. And but uh, I would say probably about half by the time we're done taking clients this year it'll be half to two-thirds excuse me so i that's one of the things i want um i want the advisors today to kind of think about is this is we're going to talk about a national scope really it's an international play uh but you know with for every disadvantage you think you can have and tell us a little bit about your personality type too because you know, I think that uh, like you're coming on camera and you're you've got a nice mic and we can see behind you, you know, your uh, your fracture there with the with the the show badge. So I think the um, it reminds me I was talking to an advisor two weeks ago and he joined our VAAE program, which is done by the Brits that, you know, uh, where they created a, a little YouTube channel with a little they basically use this to create a YouTube channel. And now they're doing 50K a month with free appointments that book themselves on their calendar. And he came through that program and he told me something very interesting, which I didn't really appreciate what that program does. I'm, I'm still learning every day. He says, you know, the biggest thing, I got my channel up, I got my videos up. But the biggest thing I learned about myself was I never thought I was good enough to go in front of a camera and teach people what I know. Because I, I, I'm okay with meeting you, Jeremiah, and meeting somebody and helping them with whole life, his, his uh, niche, his whole life. Uh, but just thinking that I would, like, I have something to share was not a belief that I had. Um, and it was, it was striking to me to hear that because I had been, the program was not built around that concept. But as you go through your journey in life, you realize there's kind of these levels of comfort zone that start growing. And... You know, what you don't think you could do now, you end up being able to look back in the future and be like, wow, you know, I can't believe I did that. So for you, tell us a little bit about your personality type too, because that that is a real driver I find of that people limit their success because they say, I'm not like this, right? Can right. you tell, talk a little bit about that? Yeah, I, I can turn it on and turn it off, right? I love to be on stage. Uh, I love to visit with other advisors, you know, because I feel like it's paying it forward, right? Like five or six years ago, I had no uh, online audience. You know, I wasn't, you know, bursting at the seams with clients in AUM and, and I, I was there. So I, I get really excited, especially, you know, talking to dads with kids that want to, you know, grow an amazing business and they want to have an amazing family life, but they want to do both in balance. Oftentimes that that's spurred by negative things like uh, I didn't have a dad or my dad wasn't around growing up. So I want to be with my kids or we were really poor growing up. So I want to have a fantastic business so I can do all the things for my kids that, that my parents could never do for me. Right. A lot of times those come from negative experiences and we want to turn those around and, and make them positive. Both were true in my life as well. Uh, so so I'm naturally quite an introvert. But when I'm on stage, when I'm on camera, when I'm on behind a microphone, you know, I really come alive because I care more about teaching dads how to be awesome then i care about you know like going to my natural introverted self where i just want to be drinking uh, white claws with my wife and watching simpsons reruns or whatever <laughs> yeah and, and you know there's a there's a great expression that uh, i heard somebody use once that uh so for all you introverts out there all right our fellow introverts who this is not an that this is not a normal place uh if this illustration helps you is sometimes you just got to put on the batman cape you know, like uh, I, Batman is one of my favorite superheroes. And, you know, the, that I think Christopher Nolan did the best job of showing that, you know, his struggle internally of like, I haven't given enough yet. And so he was Bruce Wayne. And then, but when the suit came on, he was, you know, he did whatever he needed to do to save the day. And, um, and that's what you do. You care more, you're in your mind, you're caring more about the person, the dad you're trying to help then like, I, I'd rather sit back and, you know, drink White Claws. So I really want to thank you for that. What took you into podcasting? Like, uh, what was going on in your head? What was the genesis of, of like, you know what, I'm going to get a mic and start talking about money? Yeah, so I knew that I needed to be found online. You know, I, so then that's how I met our mutual friend, friend, Jeff Rose, uh, mm -hmm. through his, his online courses that we've, that we've talked about in the past. But I, uh, 
you know, so I mentioned coal and oil were our big employers here locally. And there was this big generational hire that they did back in the 80s when they built all these coal mines. And all of these guys had worked there for 30 years. And there's this generational turnover that happened. And we got quite a few clients, you know, on the on the run up that were, you know, 57, 58, 59 and retiring. We only deal with with retired clients as, as our niche. And I looked around and I and I was at this energy generation conference, which where you're, you know, I had a booth and stuff and, you know, and meeting these people. And over the years, I saw they went from average age of 55 to 45 to 35. And I thought, you know, this, this geographically specific, geographically local thing, I said, I don't think this is going to be the way forward for me. You know, I've got whatever it was, 20 or 30 clients. I want a hundred clients. I don't think that the kind of clients I want, it's going to be, it's going to be more and more advisors competing over a smaller and smaller pool of clients. And I was following Michael Kitsis's blog. I was following some other financial advisors, Roger Whitney. And I thought, what an amazing thing that advice, that, that prospects are no longer limited to the best financial advisor on their block or in their neighborhood, right? They can find that unique advisor in the entire world that serves the specific niche that they want to serve. So my buddy, Adam Schmela, he works with ortho orthodontists that are trying to sell their practices to, to, to VC companies, right? And, he, and he's got a podcast, 2020 Money, and he can talk to every, it's either dentists or eye doctors, wherever they live on earth, right? Just for, and he doesn't even need a show of 100,000 downloads. A thousand downloads a month would probably be more than he needs. So I was looking down the road and trying to picture this, uh, and and I said I need to start a blog, right? That's what my buddy Jeff did. Start a blog. I'm going to start a blog. Uh, and I, I it took me like three months to write an article about Roth IRAs or something. Uh, and I realized that you know <laughs> if you catch me on a bad day, you'd think I'm you know just semi semi literate at best. I thought I'm I'm not a blogger, uh, so I I don't know you know. This, this thing where sometimes you can trip over before you see it, right? I'm subs I was subscribed at the time to like 28 podcasts. And so I went and I searched retirement podcast and there was like five retirement podcasts. And my first thought was, oh, there's already five retirement podcasts. Like, I, why, do we, why do they need a sixth, right? But I knew that I, need to ha I had to do something because my vision of what my practice was going to be someday just was not going to manifest itself in Bismarck, North Dakota. Nothing against Bismarck. I could live anywhere. I love it here. But the types of clients that I wanted, I could see that the, that this train was coming to an end. I needed to find the next thing, and I probably needed a couple of years of runway to to build it up to something that could sustainably bring us, you know, uh, put me in front of sixty million dollars worth of AUM a, a year without picking up the phone. So, so that's why I started podcasting because I'm a failed blogger, basically. But uh, I could talk forever. You know, can't write for anything, but I could talk forever. <laughs> Great stuff. So what is, uh, tell us a little bit about what uh, life is like now, like you said, without picking up the phone. So what is the reality of, of having a blog like that in terms of solving the number one problem that we are committed to here at Advisors, which is having qualified prospects come to you, right? Solving that, that industry old uh, problem of where do I get qualified prospects? So what is, what is life like now for you? Well, I can teach you how to get qualified prospects, but what life is like now for me is uh, I I never talk about becoming a client on my show uh, outright. I'll, I'll say things because I don't want it to be salesy, right? I've read the reviews of other financial podcasts and, and a, a common complaint is, you know, they're too salesy, right? Uh, I've surveyed my audience three summers in a row and, and, I, and I consistently get, I like your show because it's not salesy. It's just straightforward information and things like that. So I'll, but, but, I mean, I'm a financial advisor, right? I want to get clients from my show at some point. Can't you can't be non-salesy forever, right? You need to you need to get clients. So I, I'll I'll subtly talk about you know when I work with clients, I do this when I when I work on their tax reports, or when I the other day with a client, I did this this and this and saved them whatever in taxes or or whatever the 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 process may be. And my friend Roger Whitney, who's got the Retirement Answer Man show, one of the biggest shows on earth, probably the number one retirement podcast that exists. And one of the shows that inspired me to become a podcaster, he describes it as growing your orchard. So he, he says, serve first, grow your orchard. And if you can grow your orchard orchard long enough, when it's time to harvest, it will be more, more fruit than you could ever gather yourself. So envision, you know, you, sure, you, you, you know, year one or year two, you could probably pick one or two apples off of the tree, right? But if you keep nurturing that tree and nurturing that audience and, and just serving them and, and giving them everything that you have, eventually you'll be able to harvest and it'll be, it'll be more, more than you could ever gather yourself. So now that I've been doing that for, for a few years, I had a special year end episode and I said, 
2020 was terrible. And it's probably the worst year in the world to be preparing for retirement, right? Uh, we got layoffs. We got the market was terrible. We got unlimited volatility. We got a virus that's killing everybody over the age of 80 and everybody over the age of 50 is really worried about it. And I said, what are we going to do to make 2021 different than that? And I told the story about frying an egg. And I said, I could be an expert in egg frying, right? This comes from my, my coach and my friend, John Barron. But I could be an expert in egg frying, right? I could go down to the local library and I could read encyclopedias about eggs. I could learn the molecular compensation of an egg. I could learn everything you'd ever want to know about eggs, where they came from, what color chicken lays, what color egg. But I'll never actually have a fried egg until I go to the fridge, grab an egg, grab a pan, crack the egg. It's the action. It doesn't matter how much I know about eggs. It's the action that I need to take to get that fried egg. And I told that story. And I said, if 2021 is the year that you want to take action on your amazing retirement, I'm accepting 10 new clients in my practice this year. Visit retirementstartstoday.com slash meeting. You can schedule an appointment with me. Here's what the appointments look like. No pressure. We'll just ask. You have, you have a decision to make with, with three choices. I'll, I'll pre pre prepare a plan for you. You can either prepare the plan yourself. You can execute the plan with another advisor. And if you think I'm a good fit, you can execute the plan with me. And I, I had uh, the next day, I had 16 appointments, uh, which we're working through right now. We, we do a surge process. So we're surging through these these new prospect appointments. And I think it'll, you know, by the end of the quarter, it'll bring 10 or $20 million in new assets, which will get me pretty close to my $100 million uh, goal. And then I, I think I'll be done taking clients. So That's great. I mean, there's a lot to unpack there. And we're, you know, we don't have a lot more time, but we got something really cool for everybody uh, to keep the journey going in just a sec, I'll let everybody know. But one thing I did want to unpack is the the psychological switch that you made there of I'm accepting only 10 clients as opposed to who wants to work with me, right? Which is sadly the way that, you know, everybody is trained in the space, like go after. And it's a very, it's a very um, needy type of place to come instead of one of, you know, abundance or, you know, like you started with abundance and then you added scarcity, right? Hey, I got this massive orchard. I'm only working with 10. If I bet you, it would have been fun to do a test, right? If we could split test that call to action. One call to action says, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm starting to work with more people. So if you're interested, go to that link versus I'm only accepting 10. Like, Obviously, we know which one would have outconverted, but I, I use that dichotomy to show everybody on the line that there's value in being scarce. There's value in putting limits because then if you don't associate value to your time, nobody else will, right? right. That's why a lot of advisors and frankly, most people today are stuck in busy work. They're sitting at their desks thinking they're, do, they're busy, but really they're just busy doing busy work, but not the things that'll move the needle, right? They're, pl they're, they're playing to, office. Playing office. Great. I, yeah. Thank you. That's what I should have said at the beginning. <laughs> That's a great expression. I never heard that before, but I'm going to. Uh, it's not mine. It's not mine, but it's, it's, I, I've been super guilty of that in the past. 